This is Carla at National RV Detroit. I'm going to show you through your 2021 Keystone Bullet 287 QBS. We're on the door side of the trailer. So I'll walk towards the rear. Okay. So here we have an outside kitchen. You've got a 110 volt AC refrigerator and a range top. The range top, you have to plug in the, uh, the LP line. You can see the LP line is back here. And the, the fitting looks like that, the male fitting. I'm trying to get it to focus, but it's not cooperating. There you go. So this has to be plugged in before you use it. So if you come down here, um, okay. You can see, whoops, I'm sorry. You can see that. There's the quick connect right there. You just pull back on the, here, let me get closer to it so I can show you. You're basically just gonna pull back on this, put the male end in there, let it go, and then you turn your gas on this way, okay? That's all there is to it. You put the plug in when you're traveling just to keep the dirt out of it. All right, okay, so let me get back up here. All right, you got a power awning with an LED strip. This right here is um, a sprayer. You've got a spray port on the trailer and this plugs in with a quick connect fitting also. Uh, I'll show you the port when we get to it. Okay, this is uh, uh, the service panel for your refrigerator. You don't really have to go in there. This is a furnace vent. This is video here, cable TV and satellite TV, cable and antenna on the right or satellite. Um, you have power here to plug a TV in. And right here, there's a, a backing plate if you wanted to hang a mounting bracket for a TV there. All right, you got outside speakers. Steps that fold into the trailer. Okay, you got front pass-through storage with a light here. Let me see if I can turn it on here. Okay. Deep cycle marine battery. Two LP tanks. With a, um, let me pull it off here so I can tell you for sure what we got here. Okay. So two 20 pound tanks. And this is an automatic changeover regulator. This is not a tank selector here. This is just, you point it at the tank and you can see by the color of this whether it's the tank has gas in it or not. Okay, turn it on. And you see the red went away. It's clear now. So if it's, em if it's got gas in it, it'll be clear. If, if it doesn't, it'll be red. You got a power tongue jack. Now you can pull the plug out of this tongue jack right here and there's a crank to crank it manually if you have to. Um, this little plug here, this, re this receptacle is for a, a solar panel battery charger. So if you ever wanted to get one, you just get one that plugs right, right to there and it'll charge your battery. It will not run the trailer. It just charges the battery. Okay. Let me see what we've got over here. Okay. All right, so these switches here are for your stabilizer jacks. This one is for the rear, right? This one here is for the front. So you extend it, I'll show you. And it will go down, they go down one at a time. You can see that, okay. Um, this shaft here, you can put a, a crank on that shaft and basically um, you can, uh, if, you're, if they happen to fail for some reason, get damaged, for, you can always crank them up manually uh, so you're not stuck with them in the down position which is a good thing. Let me just retract it here. So, oops, retract it here. Okay, this is the kill switch for your battery. You can shut it off just by going like that. You can see when I shut it off, the power goes out. Um, we're not plugged in right now, I don't think, even though I, uh, I thought we were, but I didn't check. I guess I should have, huh? We're running off battery power right now. Um, so the reason you would want to shut the battery off is because of the, even if you shut all the lights off, the carbon monoxide and LP gas detector are hardwired to the battery. 
So when you put it in storage, it'll still drain it. So the only time you shut the battery off is when you're in storage. All other times you keep it on. Uh, okay, this is your city water fill. This is the most common way to get water to the trailer. You just hook the hose on there, turn on the tap, and you're ready to go. It pressurizes the trailer. If you go to a campground that doesn't have plumbing on a campsite, uh, you can fill your onboard water tank through here, and there's a pump inside the trailer, an electric pump that'll pump the water, and you can still use the shower and toilet and sink and everything just like you normally would. All right, um, and that's just satellite and cable through to the entertainment area. And this is a black tank flush. After you've dumped your tanks, after you've dumped the black tank, you can hook the hose at the dump station into here and turn it on and it'll spray the inside of the black tank and clean it out even better. Keeps the sensors good and clean and it just does a really good job of cleaning it. Just remember to have, like it says here on this, this sticker here, I don't know if you can read it on the video, but it says make sure the the gate valve, the dump valve, is open on the black tank before you turn the water on here because you don't want too much pressure to build up inside. All right. right. Now your slide out is in. Okay, this is just a, a uh, outside shower for kids and dogs and feet and bicycles and what have you. This is your water heater. It works on either gas or electric. The switches are inside. This is the drain plug so you know that's how you drain it but you operate it from the switches inside the trailer. Now this has to be bypassed before you winterize the trailer. If you don't know that or don't know about bypassing, you're gonna to have to learn or have it done, okay? You can't get antifreeze into the water heater tank because it leaves a really foul taste and smell that you won't be able to get rid of, so that's why you bypass it. All right, so you got your gray valve and your black valve. You just pull on them to dump them. Your hose goes on there, obviously, and the other end goes to the dump station. So you'll pull the black valve first. The black is the black tank is toilet water and waste. The gray is sink and shower water. So you'll pull the black first, and then you'll pull the gray, because it's cleaner water than the black water. It'll wash the hose out somewhat. Then you can go up to where I showed you up there and use their back tank flush, which cleans out the black tank even better. You always want to check your lug nuts. Figure after you pull it for 50 to 100 miles, you want to retorque them. Make sure they're around 100, 110 foot pounds. Just make sure they're snug. We've, we've torqued them, the factory torqued them, but you still have to occasionally do it. And it's a good thing to do after you've uh, used, pulled the trailer a little ways, okay? This is your 30 amp power cord. It's 25 feet long and 30 amp. Um, this is the spray port I told you about. I showed you the coiled up uh, sprayer, the blue one. You can see that this is pre-wired for a backup camera. If you want to get a backup camera for it, you got to get a Furion that fits into that housing. Um, we do sell them here. You can talk to our parts people. Basically, when you turn your running lights on, it'll light up the camera. You can see behind you when you're backing up or when you're going down the road. Also, while we're looking up here, you have to inspect the roof of your trailer. This is every trailer ever made has to be inspected. So you figure three times a year, you go up in the spring, you go up in the fall. Once in the middle of the summer, you look at all the seals. Make sure they're good and tight. There's no cracking or separation starting. And when you do see that some year, uh, it will happen. It always does. You want to get that taken care of if you don't know how to do it yourself or do it yourself if you're, if you're inclined. Uh, but the bottom line is you've got to inspect it. Odds are you won't have to do anything you know, for, for some years, but you don't know that. That's why you inspect it, just to make sure. Okay, so here we are inside. We're still cleaning it, so uh, it's a little dirty still, but we have to get these videos done. So, here we are. You have a power awning, which is right here. So you're just going to push extend, and you can see how it goes. That simple. You got your LED strip there. You roll it out till you can see the awning tube. Um, the awning tube is just a black metal tube, and you'll see it, and that's how you know when to stop. Okay. Your slide room is right here, so you're going to push it out, like so. This particular slide out is called an AccuSlide. There are different types. This one's an AccuSlide, in case anybody ever asked you. you always make sure there's no cupboard, doors open, or drawers, or anything that's going to get... Uh, that's going to be caught by the slide out and get damaged. So here we go, right there, all right. Okay, so now we're at the panel here. The battery 
is being charged right now. Remember I said we're not plugged in. Fresh water, it still has to be dumped, but we've water tested it. So it shows two thirds full, but it will be empty for you. You can see it graduates up in one third increments as it fills. Black tank is empty. This one does not have a second black tank, so you just disregard that. Gray tank is empty. And galley tank. Um, your TV has on a swing out bracket. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we've got here. I don't want to miss anything. Your radio plays DVDs and CDs. It's, um, it can stream off this USB stick. Uh, you can hook up to it uh, wirelessly with Bluetooth, so you can play the MP3s off your phone or whatever. Um, it has two zones, uh, one and two. One is inside, two is outside. Uh, like I said, CDs and DVDs, not Blu-ray, but regular DVDs. So it, it, it does everything you need for camping. All right. You have uh, theater seating right here. Your table is in the down position, but you have you can see it's got an apparatus here. You just pull it to the up position and it'll lock into place. If you want to use it for bed, you put it in this position and use the back cushions to fill in the spaces. Um, all the lights will also have a button in the middle that you can operate it separately, independently. Okay, this is your thermostat. Uh, you go through modes, fan, air conditioner, furnace, and off. Now, the fan is just the air conditioner running without the compressor. It just circulates air through. Okay, and you can set your temperature on it. It's pretty self explanatory. It's like any other thermostat. You've got a Dometic refrigerator. This is a two-way refrigerator. It works on 110 AC or 12, or, or excuse me, uh, LP gas. You turn it on right here, right? And then right now we're on automatic. Let's see if we can get it to focus here so I can show you. Doesn't really want to. There it goes. So it's on auto right now. Auto means electricity. Electricity takes parameters, so it'll always search for electricity, and if it's available, it'll use it. Also, if you're at the campground and you're hooked up to electrical power and you have a power outage, it'll uh, automatically switch over to gas for you, so you don't spoil your food. Now, you can pull this down the road dedicated on gas, so you would just push this button here, and it changes to gas. If this check light comes on, it means it faulted, it didn't light. Um, you would just shut it off and turn it back on if that ever happens, and it'll cycle through again so it lights. But normally, you're going to have it on auto. Also, this thing's called a thermistor. You want to have it up as high as you can get it to get it as cold as you want, can get it. Bring it down, it gets warmer. Generally, you're going to have it up as cold as you can get it. All right? So that's your Dometic gas absorption refrigerator. Okay, so your range. Um, I had to turn the gas on, so I don't know if there's probably none up here at this point. So let me just, I'll turn this burner on. You turn it to the flame, and then you rotate this clockwise okay and it lit so you spark it by rotating this clockwise you do that for each burner now for the oven let me make sure that this one sparks some don't I think this one does yes so this is the first of all there's a light but second of all this works like a water heater at home or they used to work some still do you go to pilot light right there you'll depress this and then you hold it in you don't you don't take your thumb off of it then you'll spark it, and the pilot light that's way back in the bottom, into the very back, you can see it back there, it'll light. When it lights, you hold this in for about another 10 or 15 seconds to heat it up. Then you go to operating temperature. It'll cycle through like a regular oven, but when you shut it off, the flame obviously goes out, but so does the pilot light, so you'll have to relight it each time before you use it. All right. The, uh, I told you about the range hood, or maybe I didn't. That's your range hood and fan and, and light. The microwave works like any other microwave. Nothing unique about it. You have a vent here. The bathroom. The shower works like any other shower. Sink works like any other sink. This GFCI, all the plugs will be wired through a GFCI. Um, so if, a, if you're using a coffee pop and a pops outside you'll reset it at the GFCI CI inside okay uh, the toilet um, this in case you don't know I don't know your level of experience so I'll assume you don't but the black tank is directly below what you see there is residual water from water testing it okay so um, 
when you first get to the campground, you'll, you'll, tur you'll plug it in, you'll hook up your water, then you'll come in here and you'll put some chemical in the toilet, whatever chemical you use, powder, liquid, whatever you use. Then you'll step on the pedal and water will come swirling out. And you'll put about a gallon or so, a gallon maybe two tops in there. There's no way to tell it from a monitor panel. You just have to get used to doing it. It's just going to take a little bit of water and some chemical to get started. The bottom line is you don't use it dry. You always start with some chemical and water. All right. Also, when you flush it, it'll only fill about up to here when you, after you flush it. That's so it doesn't slot, the water doesn't slosh out. But if you just step on the pedal, you can't really see because there's not a lot of room here. But if you step on the pedal, there's a spot here where you can activate the water valve, but the trap doesn't open. When you do that, you can fill up the bowl as full as you want with water before you use it. You just have to do that each time before you use it. Okay? All right. Also, there is a, a vent. Always use the vent with the shower to pull the humidity out. All right, so we have a bunk room back here. This is the water heater. I just want to show you that the bypass valve on this water heater is right down there. Just so you know, you have to educate yourself on it if you don't know, but that's where it is. It's located under this bench seat. You see the, he took the panel off to show you. That's where you bypass it. You can't, again, I'll repeat, you can't get uh, antifreeze into the water pump, or excuse me, into the water heater tank because it's going to leave a really foul taste and a bad smell that won't go away. So they give you a way to bypass it before you put antifreeze in. All right, so also this table will drop down and turn this into a small bed. This comes down. I'm going to have to move the camera here. Hold on. All right, so you got a latch on each side. It's really a two-handed job, but I've only got one here. There we go. And so this comes down. You got another bunk here with a... Okay. Then you have another bunk here and another bunk there. So you got four beds back there. You've got another one there plus the master bedroom. So you got a lot of a lot of places to sleep. There's a backer plate up here somewhere. The sticker's not there, but it looks to on this one they might they might set a TV. Well, let me back up. I'm sorry. Set a TV here would probably be more typical, but it's up to you. You can hang a bracket if you like. But you got antenna and power there. Alrighty, this is your power converter. So this converts 110 AC down to 12 volt DC. Um, some things have to run on AC power over here, like you see the microwave in the air conditioner, for example. You have regular household circuit breakers here. The, you have automotive fuses here, so it converts, at this point it converts uh, 110 AC down to 12 volt DC, and this is the 12 volt side here, and you can see they're all labeled. If any of these fuses blow, they'll actually light up. And you can see them through this tinted plastic here. Let me just pull that off for you. Right here. Okay. Also, this is a battery tender, so it'll sense how much energy your battery needs as long as you're plugged in. And it'll keep your battery charged up front, okay? Which is a good thing. All right. So. I think we've covered everything. I'm looking around here. I think we've pretty much been through everything. Um, there are manuals for every appliance in here, in your packet. Um, there are um, videos online. Excuse me, I'm thinking while I'm talking to you. There's videos online. You could punch in the, like for this refrigerator, it's Dometic, and then you would open the door. And over here is uh, the model number and all the information. You punch that into the search engine, and you can get the manuals for it if you don't have them. There's also videos which you can watch. So you can always educate yourself on the fly. I didn't come up here into the bedroom. Um, this pulls up, the bed pulls up and there's like a foot locker underneath. There's a mounting bracket for a TV here plus video and power. This is an escape window. So to escape you're just going to push this all the way through and then you grab a hold of this and pull the screen out and, and just out you go. Um, you have shades. Let me see if I can get a hold of this one up there. It's all the way up. Shades here. Um, um, if these ever get loose and start to fall down during transit, you, all you have to do is tighten these up a bit. So you'd pull this knot through and tie a knot like a half inch higher to tighten this up a bit and then it won't, it won't slide down anymore. Also, uh, you have two sliding doors, obviously, and that is a, over on the other side, you got like a hamper. You can put a basket underneath there, and you can drop your dirty clothes into the compartment. 
Okay. All right, I think I've got it now. Uh, oh, one more thing. See, I'm ahead of myself again. This is obviously power here. Let me get around to the other side. It's got USB plus uh, power. You have, you have receptacles everywhere, plus the USB ports, like one over there. They're all over the place, one over there. So you got plenty of charging. Also, there is a LP gas and carbon dioxide detector right here. It should always be green like it is. If it ever is not, you want to get it serviced. If it goes off, you go outside, shut off your gas, and figure out what's going on. Okay? All right. So... I want to thank you for purchasing from National RV Detroit. If you have any questions, you call us and we'll talk you through it. And uh, thank you very much.